Well, I'm glad you guys are all here. Um, really what I'm going to do today is just we're uh, going to talk about a song that I did with John Mellencamp. It's called Play Guitar. And uh, we're just going to kind of go through. Hi, Pat. We're kind of going to go through uh, what that process was and, you know, how we came up with what we came up with, basically. Um, where do I start? But uh, anyway, we're, this is not so much a guitar lesson, more like I'm going to be talking about um, the process of recording guitars and how they fit in with songwriting. And uh, that's, that's really kind of where my expertise is, because that's what I've always done. Little tiny space, and I'll do it again. Right there. That's a breath. I call that a breath. And then that allows the drums to go bam, bam. They're set up now. So those little tiny things, because if you got a keyboard player hanging over, bass player hanging over, a cymbal hanging over, it don't work. Because that space, that little tiny space is taken up. And believe it or not, those are the things that make and break a lot of songs and a lot of performances. When you hear a band, you say, man, those guys are tight. That's what they're doing. They're stopping when they're supposed to stop. And all okay. But he would just come in and play the chords and, and sing the melody. So what we'd have to deal with, we'd have whatever rhythm, whatever you want to make of it, uh, the lyric and the melody, and that's how we, at least the way I approach the song. Those are the things I look at. You know, I don't look at the chord progression and go, oh, he's playing A, D, G, 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 whatever. As a matter of fact, sometimes I would change those chords to relative minors or throw a third on the, on the low end and just to color them up a little bit. So, because they're folk songs when they come in, basically. Now, the song we're doing today is the exception to that rule. Uh, a friend of ours, uh, Dan Ross, had this song that he had started, and we sort of finished for him. And we love the idea. It was called Play Guitar, and it's just a goofy look at kind of tongue-in-cheek. Uh, if you want to get the girls, you got to play guitar. And... So with that in mind, it's not like a real serious song. Not to mention it's the same chords over and over and over again. So, you know, what do you do with that? Well, I'm going to explain that today, how the thought process. So I started playing some high school bands um, and just kind of went from there. I, I was hanging out with this cute little girl. Sorry, him. This cute little girl named Janet Mellencamp that lived in our neighborhood. She was a couple years younger than me. And uh, one day I was sitting around playing the guitar, and she says, you know, what? my big brother plays guitar. You guys ought to get together. So next thing you know, me and John are sitting in my mom and dad's living room playing some god-awful song that he had written. The good thing is, the good thing is, I used to go nowhere nowhere without my little tape, remember, little tape recorder? And I had one long playing cassette. And that's the only cassette that I had in there. And I recorded everything on that little green cassette. You know, and I would go over stuff. And do, but I've got me and John and his brother-in-law at the time, Dennis Esterline, in mom and dad's front room, Dennis playing bass, me playing guitar and John playing flute. <laughs> playing the flute. And singing some all oh, god awful song. I think it was called Carnival Girl or something like that. My parents are saints. So, I mean, who does that? Who lets their kids do that? Well, some wild crazy guy in the front room. So that's kind of how we got started. <laughs> 